Hello, and welcome to today's video. Today, I wanna to share with you the five things that people that heal have in common. My promise to you is that if you do these five things diligently, it is quite literally impossible for your life to not change significantly in a relatively short period of time. I've personally used these five things and I've seen these five principles applied in thousands of hours of coaching experience. And now I can speak with absolute certainty that if you do these five things, healing is absolutely certain. So the first step here, and arguably the most difficult step, is taking responsibility. Don't click off the video just yet. I know you've probably already got a lot on your mind. You've probably got a full plate. But hear me out, when I talk about taking responsibility here, what I really mean is that the individual takes full responsibility for their health outcome. This means that they're not waiting for anybody to come and save them. They are fully committed and they see themselves as completely responsible for the results that they get. When working with a practitioner, I see this all the time. You get two groups of people, some that come to work with a practitioner and they think that the practitioner is gonna be the one to save them. They think that the answer is gonna come from the practitioner. They think that the healing is gonna come from the practitioner and they wanna be saved. And one of the fundamental principles of healing is the reclamation of one's power. And you can see in this dynamic, the power isn't in the individual, the power is in the practitioner and therefore healing cannot happen. So in my experience, a good practitioner is always trying to put the power back in the individual. And you see that here because this is basically what responsibility is. It's responsibility for one's energy and responsibility for one's power. And your energy and your power basically dictate your outcomes. The best way to ensure that you are taking the responsibility that's necessary for you to get the health outcomes that you want is to truly adopt the mindset that nobody's coming to save you. Nobody's gonna figure this out for you. You might be fortunate in that you can connect with certain people that will give you pieces of the puzzle, but you are the only person that can put them together. And not only are you the only person that's able to do this, you are the only person that is responsible to do this. No one else is responsible to do this for you. It doesn't matter if they give birth to you. It doesn't matter if you've paid them lots of money. It doesn't matter whatever they've said, whatever they've promised to you, it doesn't matter. All of your healing will wholly come from yourself. And when you fully accept that and you truly embrace that, healing is a natural outcome. So look for anywhere in your life that you feel victimized. Look for anywhere in your life where you feel powerless. Look for anywhere in your life where you feel like you could take a little bit more responsibility. And I assure you, as you grab that responsibility, you are in a way reclaiming a part of yourself, you're reclaiming your power. And the only possible outcome of the reclamation of one's power is healing. That is the only possible outcome. So that is the first, and I would say arguably most important thing that people that heal have in common. Because if you don't do this, none of the other steps are gonna truly work. So you have to take full responsibility for the situation that you're in. No matter how you got there, no matter if you are actually truly a victim, if you have been victimized in some way, maintaining that victim energy will not give you any positive outcome. So we have to take massive responsibility. The second characteristic that people who heal have in common are their action takers. So these are people that once they learn something, once they understand a new principle, they will immediately action it. I know lots of people that find new information or they learn something new and they're like, oh, that's interesting. And then it almost just rattles away in the back of their brain and does nothing. And you can learn as much as you want, but if you don't put it into practice, it's not gonna do you any good. It is really important, however, that I make a very key distinction here. And that is that they don't just take action. It's really important that we understand a concept that I call busy work. So busy work is a form of taking action, but it's actually non-productive. So this is where we do things that make us feel productive or that keep us very busy, but they don't actually get us to the end outcome that we want. Easiest way that I could explain what this looks like would be to think about a small business. Think about a little bakery that has opened up. The bottom line for all businesses is they have to be profitable. If you don't have a profitable business, you don't have a business. So if you've opened this bakery and you spend lots of time creating all of these lovely baked goods, all of these cookies and pastries, and then you go on Canva and you create some really nice designs and you get some really nice branding and a good logo and you do all of these things, but they're actually not creating revenue. They're not helping you sell the products. They're not making your business profitable. Then these things are actually busy work because they make you feel really productive. They make you feel really good about yourself. They make you feel like you're putting energy into the business, but in reality, they're not the kind of work that the business actually needs. So extracting that metaphor and trying to apply it to health, I'll try to give you a couple of examples. 
the most common that I see is someone learning something and then on the worst level, we've got someone that does nothing about it. One level above that, we've got somebody that will understand something and then they'll just try to buy a supplement to patch it over. If this is you, I don't mean to offend you. I really just want you to understand that this isn't gonna give you the health outcomes that you want. This might be you if you're currently taking more than 10 supplements. I personally believe that if you actually truly understand what's going on in your body and you're targeting the approach to what your body's asking for, you should be on probably four to six or seven supplements, definitely less than 10. If you're on more than 10, there's a really good likelihood that you're doing this thing. And half of these supplements are probably doing next to nothing for you, apart from making you feel like you are spending money that's making you heal, even though it actually isn't. Another thing would be learning something and trying to find a way to action that information, but then hitting a singular roadblock and then just giving up. I see this very often with probiotics. A lot of people are very sensitive to probiotics and that's because they're so important and it's because they address so many areas of dysfunction in the body and in the digestive system. The thing is, because so many people need them and because the gut is such a biochemically active environment and because people are in such a deep and dire need of these, often the probiotics have very strong, very significant reactions. And this makes people wanna just stop taking them, just give up and never take them. And this is absolutely the wrong approach. You can't just give up on something the first time you find an obstacle. We need to keep throwing ourselves at that obstacle. We need to try and tackle it in a different way. We need to find a way in. We need to find a way past. And a lot of the time, with the current perspective or the current mindset or understanding that you have on a certain problem, you don't know how. And this is where getting some extra help can be really useful, but I'm gonna to come to that in a moment. So to summarize this second point, it is extremely important that you take action. Once you learn something, you need to action it immediately. However, you have to make sure you're not falling into the trap of busy work. You can't just be doing things that make you feel productive, that make you feel like you're investing time, money, energy, and effort into solving a problem when they're not the actual steps that you need to take that move you forward. And if you're absolutely sure you're on the right track and then you hit a roadblock, you cannot just give up straight away. You have to find a way around it. You have to think creatively. You have to think outside of the box. You have to find a way to get through. The third thing that people who heal have in common is an abundance mindset. Now, I know this might sound a little bit new agey or a bit spiritual or woo-woo, but let me explain it to you. I think about an abundance mindset as being this state of expansion. So think about a person's mind. It's growing, it's getting bigger. This is really helpful because it means, first of all, an individual is open to new ideas, open to new perspectives. They're trying to grow and develop their understanding. But this step goes a little bit further. We're looking at this, first of all, from that mindset perspective, but the way that we think also influences the, the actions and behaviors that we have, that we take. And when someone's in a state where they have a mindset of abundance, the way that they go about the approach to things that they do seems to be far more effective. So one example here would be the belief that they have about the body. If you're able to entertain a belief that the body is intelligent, that the body is self-healing and self-regulating, and that it's trying to do something and it just needs a little bit of help and support to do so, that is gonna change how you go about supporting your body physically. It's gonna change how you eat. It's gonna change the supplements you take. It's gonna change the way that you go about the healing process. Whereas if you have a belief that your body is broken or that your body is stupid and you need to fix it or you need to manage it, if you think that there's no way that you can heal or that recovery is absolutely impossible, you're not in an abundance mindset here. It is important to be realistic, and again, we'll come to that in a moment, but you would be absolutely shocked at the amount of people that I meet that pay me money, but hold a belief that it is impossible for them to heal. And if you cannot shift that belief, there is nothing anyone can do. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing any doctor, practitioner, shaman, or anybody on the whole of the face of the earth can do. This abundance mindset also significantly influences how people make choices. One of the very interesting parallels that I've seen talking about this abundance mindset with one of the other concepts that I talk about being the Goldilocks zone. If you've seen the childhood tale, you know, of the porridge, the three bears, not too hot, not too cold, just right. An abundance mindset is also very much understanding that more is not always better and the right amount is the right amount. I find it 
absolutely fascinating and bizarre when I go to an all-you-can-eat restaurant, say I'm having all-you-can-eat sushi, and I'll see people that are absolutely stuffing themselves. They're basically making themselves sick. This is not an abundance mindset. This really indicates a poverty mindset. This is, I don't have enough, so I'm gonna get my money's worth. I'm gonna try and take everything I can. And they actually push themselves far to the extreme. They push themselves out of the zone of power and that's not where health is. That's not where healing is. Your power is in trusting your instincts and trusting your appetite. You eat the food until you're full and then you stop. I know it sounds so simple, but you would be absolutely shocked at how many people do what I just said. But apply this same principle to healing. And it is true for food, but it also works like this with supplements. Very often, the dose is the difference between the poison and the medicine. And speaking about probiotics earlier, a lot of people are oh, more is better, I'm gonna jump in at a massive dose. And it's like, that's not how healing works. And I find that one of the key principles of this abundance mindset is truly understanding that the right amount is the right amount, and more is not necessarily better. The final piece of this abundance mindset is that these people tend to trust their guts a little bit better. So if they have a good feeling about something, then they, again, they will take responsibility and take massive action. So they'll just trust their instincts and go. And I think this is one reason why we have an epidemic of gut problems. People don't trust their guts anymore. And if you can't trust your gut, you're not going to take the actions you need to heal your gut. And you're going to have gut problems. The fourth thing that people who heal have in common are realistic expectations. Now, I'll tell you, I want to get full, complete, total healing in the click of my fingers, just as much as the next person. But I also know that that's not a realistic expectation. I had one of the most severe and chronic health problems of anyone I have ever met. And I was stuck in a state of dysfunction, and I'm talking maximum level dysfunction. My digestive system did not work. My immune system was turned off. I was disabled and in bed. My body literally at that stage was disabled in so many of its functions. And I was in that maximum state of dysfunction for approximately three years. The fact that I can even sit in front of a camera and record this video, still absolutely mind blowing. I think with having adopted realistic expectations, I still don't think I should be able to do this today, but I can, here I am. And not only that, I can eat a whole bunch of different foods, I can go to the gym and work out. I can live a nomadic lifestyle and travel around the world. I got married and I do this as my life. So you have to really think about where you've been and where you're going and what that's gonna look like realistically. But I don't want you to use this point as an excuse to suffer unnecessarily. One of the things that I've experienced is that a lot of the symptoms that people have on a daily basis are symptoms that they have attributed to, let's say, chronic toxicity. And they say, oh, this symptom's never going to go away until I've completely removed all of the heavy metals, all of the plastics, until I'm eating 100% clean for 10 years. And being completely honest, this just simply is not true. More often than not, symptoms expressing are indicators of dysfunction. They are simply your body saying, we are trying to complete this metabolic process and it is not able to be completed. Therefore, we have a symptom. So if you're able to go in and figure out what this dysfunction is and correct it, you can often get a significant amount of symptom relief very, very quickly. I think that this mindset, this understanding of how symptoms are indicators of dysfunction is one of the main reasons that in my one-to-one -one coaching programs, I'm able to help my clients attain a 60 to 80% symptom improvement in 12 weeks or less. This isn't because they've healed in 12 weeks, okay? That's not what I'm saying. This is because we've addressed these underlying dysfunctions. We listen to the symptoms. We look at what the body is telling us. You know, you have to think about symptoms as clues, as biofeedback, as the body trying to communicate. If we can take this biofeedback, if we can take these clues, and actually truly understand them, we can see where the areas of dysfunction are and correct them. And as a consequence, the symptoms will disappear. Now, like I said, we're just addressing dysfunction here. This isn't healing. This is, in a way, short-term symptom relief. However, the body tends to be sick or diseased because it has dysfunctions. So if the body is trying to do things like detoxification or digestion, and it isn't able to do these jobs correctly, that is what creates disease. So if we can address these underlying dysfunctions, you're actually aligning yourself with healing in the long run. That is basically what healing actually is. Healing is finding what dysfunctions are, are present and correcting them and making them function again. And then health is the consequence. I just really wanted to emphasize this point because I don't want you to use having realistic expectations as an excuse to suffer or to experience unnecessary symptoms. Very often there's a lot that you can do in the short term 
to provide significant symptom relief. One of the general guidelines, I think I remember this from Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride of The Gaps Diet. She said, for every year that you've been sick, it will take that many months to heal. So if you've been sick for 50 years, it's gonna take you 50 months, you know? That's like nearly five years. Also, it's really tricky because where do you define when you started getting sick? Because when I look back at my health history, I could only see obvious symptoms of disease and this acute dysfunction approximately one year before I got really, really sick. But if I look at my history, I took antibiotics as a child. I've had generally a terrible diet for at least 20 years of my life. I also had several other factors like trauma, like a physical trauma as well, trampoline accident on my neck. I took a lot of medication because I went to the mainstream medical model to try to fix my problems. And well, no surprise to how that went. But it's just looking at all of that holistically and having a realistic perspective, having a realistic idea of what can you expect and how long is this process going to take. The final thing that people that heal have in common is they don't go it alone. Humans are social beings and to think that you can heal independently and purely by yourself is not the correct way to look at this. It doesn't mean that it isn't your sole responsibility to heal, but you have to understand that you're not gonna be able to do it by yourself. You can look at this on a couple of levels. First of all, the environment that you're in has a significant influence on how you feel, how you think, the things that you do. There's a saying that you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. So I want you to think about the five people that you spend the most time with. Do you like those people? Would you like to be the average of those five people? And if not, maybe you should find another five people. If you're in an environment where you are feeling unsafe, where you are subject to abuse or neglect, where you feel like you're stepping on eggshells, if you know you have any narcissism or psychopathy in your environment. These are all really important factors that are affecting your ability to heal. You need a support system. You need people around you, friends, family, your household. You need people there to support you in your healing process. You also need the help and support of practitioners. I'm a practitioner myself and I have worked with probably at least a hundred people in my recovery process. I think every single person that I have worked with has given me a little piece of the puzzle. Sometimes they've shown me something that's very helpful. Sometimes we've tried something and it hasn't worked. And that is still information. That's still a data point that helps me make better decisions and that helps me make better decisions in the future. But because I'm always approaching working with a practitioner with this mindset, of taking ultimate responsibility for my health outcomes. They're all just giving me puzzle pieces and I'm the one putting it together. So to summarize point five, don't go it alone. Make sure that you have a very supportive environment wherever it is that you're living and don't try to figure everything out by yourself. You've got people like me that have already been through it. And there's a saying that I really love, smart people learn from their mistakes. The smartest people learn from other people's mistakes. So if you have any interest in learning from all the mistakes that I made over my 10 year healing journey. You know, I tried some of the craziest and like looking back on it, the most stupid stuff. You know, I can remember taking 180 grams of vitamin C. I've done over a thousand coffee enemas. I've tried at least 25 different brands of probiotics. The amount of things I've put in my bum, you just would not believe. Let's not even go there. I was just calculating earlier. I have accumulated 850 hours fasted this year alone. I've tried all sorts of different non-physical healing modalities, somatic experiencing, parts work. I've had at least a dozen different therapists. I've been to physiotherapists, osteopaths, chiropractors, I've done kinesiology. I've literally tried just about everything. And if you have any interest in receiving my perspective with me sharing some of my wisdom about your current health situation and what your most powerful actionable steps to take so that you can move forward on your journey as quickly as possible, I would love to invite you to book a consultation with me. All you need to do is scroll down into the description and click the link. So now to give you a full summary, the five things that people that heal have in common. Number one, they take responsibility. This means that they fully claim their health outcomes. They know that nobody is coming to save them. They clear up all of the victim energy and are fully committed to finding healing. Second, massive action takers. People that heal take massive action. As soon as they learn something new, they implement it immediately. They're also very mindful of busy work. They make sure that they're not getting distracted doing things that make them feel productive, but actually don't benefit them in the end. They're really focused on taking action that is making a significant difference to their health outcomes. The third thing is an abundance mindset. They're coming at their health problems, trying to learn, trying to develop and understand themselves 
the way that they implement the things that they learn is balanced and they understand that the right amount is the right amount. The key is in the dosage. Fourth, they have realistic expectations. This means that the outcomes that they're looking for are grounded. They're connected to reality, but they don't use this as an excuse to suffer. They understand that very often symptoms indicate dysfunction. They're chasing that dysfunction and trying to correct that dysfunction so they can align themselves with healing in the long run. And finally, they don't go it alone. They understand that the environment that they're in, the people that are around them, has a significant influence on their ability to heal. They make sure to surround themselves with positive, optimistic, supportive people, and they team up with practitioners that they feel a connection with so that they can learn from their mistakes instead of having to make those mistakes themselves. That's everything. I hope you found this video really informative, really helpful. Let me know, of these five points, where are you the most stuck? What is the one that you think you are struggling on the most? For me, the most challenging one here, every single time is responsibility. It is absolutely the hardest one for me. I also do sometimes slip up on the realistic expectations. I'm like, why am I not fully healed yet? But it's like, dude, look at where you've come from. Like you're already doing incredible. So give myself a little slap on the wrist and uh, get on with it. So let me know, which one do you resonate with the most? Which one do you struggle with the most? That's everything for me today. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.